Hey everyone, it's Trevor Daly with MagMod. Hey, I am excited to do an episode today live with Jesse and Moira LaPlante. All right, Jesse and Moira, how are you guys doing? Doing well, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. You know, it's funny, we're trying this new uh, setup for these How I Shot Us, and I noticed already that your name looks really big and mine looks super small, which is awesome. <laughs> that's how it should be. <laughs> I have no that's idea why good. my name changed like that, but that's all right. We'll just leave it. Um, guys, I, I thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this is, this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm so excited to share your photos with everybody. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been, uh, man, I did the first one like three, four years ago now, I think, so it's, uh, it's good to be back. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you brought your addition here, Mora. Yes, I've never done one of these. So I am both very excited and um, probably a little bit nervous. Yeah. More than a We're bit. always nervous. Yes. Still nervous before every shoot. Still nervous before every time we have to do one of these kind of things. So No, no, you guys are awesome. We'll, 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 <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are both here. I actually, it, everyone probably knows you already because they've seen so many of your photos in the community and on Instagram. We love sharing your work on Instagram. Um, but just in case for those who have not yet met you guys, uh, can you tell everyone where to find you? Absolutely. Um, so we are based out of Colorado. Um, we're, we live in Boulder County, just uh, about 10 miles east of Boulder, but we travel all over the state and all over the country for weddings. Um, but if you want to check us out online, our website is jlaplante.com. And, um, yeah, we actually just redesigned it. Very quiet. I, Mora redesigned it. I have zero web design skills whatsoever. <laughs> this is all Mora's work. It's still a work in progress. We're in what phase four? I don't know. We phase lost two. we lost track of phases yeah. about two at phase two. So yeah, and then we're also on Instagram at, at j.laplante photo. There it is. You guys, your your photos are incredible. And I love I it actually it, it's funny because last week we talked to Ray Sawyer. In fact, his video just went up on YouTube yesterday. Um, but I love that you and Ray are very similar in that you capture these moments. Like it's not just set up, pose, you know, look at the camera here, but you guys capture this fun, this action. Um, and I, I just, I, that's what I love about your shots. But you know, what's interesting is, is today we're actually not even going to cover any of your wedding photos. We're actually going to be good doing like kind of non wedding photos, which I'm excited to share everyone. Uh, cause there's some incredible setups. And in fact, there's two that it's like professional models. I think, is it just, are you guys, is that? <laughs> we're no, waiting so. on, our, on our contract from, from our, uh, our manager. Yeah, we're not going to quit our day job anytime soon, but uh, maybe that's another career path down the line. <laughs> so the, the hint I'm getting at, guys, is there's some, actually some photos of just these two. I think it's your Christmas card photo, if I'm not mistaken. But we show the, the kind of the setup and how they you know put up the lights and everything else. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah. Guys, I do want to share. So for those who are watching on the MagMod business page, so if you're if you're watching this, Head over to the Magmon business page. You can actually, when you comment, I believe if these comments work right, I can click this and I can, you guys can see that, right? Hi, Shannon. Hey, Shannon. <laughs> yeah, oh, so we Shannon, can... Shannon's avatar is uh, our, oh. our photo of her from when they came to Colorado. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so as you guys are commenting, we can throw your comments right up here on the screen. If there's anything that, uh, any questions, for example, uh, there's Aniket. He, he did an awesome how I shot it as well. We got Abby's watching. Hey, hey. Um, yep, Anika is mentioning the setup. Yeah, so I'm excited, guys. We do have this new setup. So if you guys, uh, like I said, have any questions or anything, we can toss them right up on the screen. Wani Juan, he's an amazing photographer as well. He says, hola, amigos. Uh, he's coming at you from, uh, from Mexico there. Um, so, so yeah, we appreciate that. But guys, in the meantime, let's jump into some of these photographs because like I said, we have about, I think it's like three sets, three different sets of photos, and each one has kind of these different lightings. Um, Guys, let's talk about this first one here. This is, uh, I think, a senior session, right? Yeah, so just a little bit of background. I mean, we are primarily wedding photographers, but because this last year was um, so different, we were able to say yes to some shoots that we normally don't have the time for. Weddings keep us incredibly busy, um, but this was a, a friend, a good friend of Jesse's from high school and growing up, and they came out to Colorado for his son's um, 
senior photos. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we got to play around a little bit with some lighting uh, scenarios that we don't normally have the time to do on a wedding day, or we don't have the the capacity for on a wedding day. Yeah, usually it's like, you know, okay, between the ceremony and the reception, 20 minutes, go, go, go. And I'd say at least 90% of what we do on the wedding day is just with one light mm -hmm. uh, for simplicity's sake and uh, efficiency's sake. Um, yeah. But you know, this year, this fall in particular, after we got through our, our, our fall wedding push, uh, we were able to do some of these kind of like more creative shoots where we could spend some time and, and relax and not be under that uh, time crunch with that, uh, you know, the wedding timeline to kind of dictate what we're doing. We got to use more lights and things. So yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. that's a great time to kind of experiment, right? And just kind of try new things. And um, it's it's so much fun when you can actually, I love wedding shoots, but, but like you said, it's go, go, go. And we can actually do these portrait sessions or senior sessions or, you know, whatever. It kind of allows you to experiment a little bit more. So. Yeah. And so Spencer, you know, he's on his baseball team. Baseball is a big part of his life. And so we definitely, we knew we wanted to integrate that. And we, these fields were just down the street from our house. And so we popped down there for an evening and um, well, we, we'd like to take credit for the sky that you'll see in these photos. That was actually um, kind of a bittersweet thing. It, it was from the forest fires that were burning in Colorado at the time, and this was in October. Um, but it did give us some very dramatic sunsets that we wanted to make sure that we could use in the photos. Yeah, it's hard to talk about a silver lining to uh, these giant fires that we had. But if there is a silver lining, it was that our sunsets uh, all throughout August and September and October were, were pretty intense. Um, so that's like usually the uh, sunsets in Colorado are pretty cool, but they they were a little bit extra uh, mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. So what what was your lighting setup here? Is it because I have a behind the scenes shot right here? Is this the same lighting setup for the the baseball one right there? The the hit. Yeah. Yeah. So these lights, uh, I'm I'm kind of crouched down in the shot just in front of the plate here of the home plate, or just to the left of home plate if you were looking at it from the pitcher's mound. Uh -huh. uh, so I'd say the lights were set up at approximately two o'clock and eight o'clock on the clock face. If I'm at six and the batter is in, in the middle of the clock face and we had uh, the two um, mag boxes with I think each had 180, 200 in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had the focus diffusers uh, on the boxes, which sort of uh, intensifies the light and directs the light in uh, kind of a, a beam, a little bit like a grid, not that tight. Um, but what it also does is allows us to shoot with a lower uh, flash power. So our recycle rate is much faster. Uh, and then we had to figure out how, you know, to get the ball in the air because I didn't want him to foul one off straight into my face. Right. So I was thinking have, that I was actually yeah. thinking that exact same thing. Cause I'm looking at this shot going, man, if that ball happens to come right off the bat and go to the side, which can happen quite yeah. frequently. I, right. I, because I I'm crashed down just like five feet from him shooting wide on the first base line, yeah. base pad. Uh, so we had uh, we had my friend, his dad, stand right next to me and just lob balls up in the air like this, like you would do during, um, you know, batting practice. Uh, okay. Before a game or something like not batting practice, but just whatever you call there it. Lob it up and hit it out. There were a couple. <laughs> there were a couple close calls, but a lot safer than if he was actually pitching from the pitcher's mound at seventy miles an hour. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. We made it work. And then I just shot continuous high mode on the camera, which I think is like eight frames per second. Uh, so eight frames every single second. And then I just went, it was able to go in there and pick out the best one where the ball is actually hitting the bat. So what, I mean, cause if you're going to be shooting that fast, then you had to keep your flashes pretty low powers. Cause otherwise they're not going to recycle quick enough. Do you remember what your flashes were at? Well, yeah, I definitely want to keep them as low as possible. Cause like, like you said, uh, we want them to pop off in as many frames as humanly possible. That said, still, I would say about 50% of the frames, uh, were just completely black. Okay. Because I think I had to shoot it probably around an uh, one eighth, okay. one sixteenth, somewhere in there, which is, yeah. uh, you know, it's not super powerful, but at the same time, it's not going to fire every single sh eight frames per second, right? Gotcha. Um, at nighttime, when there's no ambient light to uh, to combat, right, then you can go down to one one twenty eighth because, uh, you, again, there's no ambient light to overpower, in which yeah. case uh, these lights, like we'll show you uh, in the next shoot, um, where we did a Christmas card at nighttime, uh, they pop off in literally every single frame for yeah. shooting eight feet per second for like five seconds straight. Well, the, the interesting thing, you had mentioned the focus diffusers that you used them in those mag boxes there um, mm -hmm. and, and this behind the scenes here. 
And it, and it yeah. makes sense to use a focused diffuser, even if it wasn't for the grid, but just for the efficiency, because if you're using your flashes, firing them at such low powers, it really, it does make sense to use those focus diffusers so you can get as much power in there as possible, whether it be one eighth, one sixteenth, whatever. So um, that's awesome, man. Uh, what about, is this shot here? Uh, it, did you guys use the same lighting setup? Is it a cross lighting? Yeah, this was, so the last one was uh, like two and eight, and this one was just a slight tweak to right about three and nine. So both lights coming in at, at a 90 degree angle like that, kind of okay. like um, emulating like ESPN lighting for athletic portraits we've seen in the past, that kind of thing. And again, incorporating the, the smoky yeah. sunset back there. I, I was yeah, just going to say, oh, go ahead, Moira. I'm sorry. I was going to say this is a flash setup we often use, and especially if, if we are doing sports like this, um, you know, and terminology like that is is a great shortcut for us. So, you know, when he says ESPN lighting, we know like, okay, we're going to do three and nine at this. And it gets that really dramatic look. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's funny. I actually, I'll, I'll call it the Sports Illustrated because that's exactly what it is. You see the cover of the Sports Illustrated magazines. And the other one that the person who does this a lot, although he typically will add one light above is uh, Joel Grimes. I don't know if you guys ever follow Joel Grimes, but he does a lot okay. of sports lighting and he typically does two lights from the side and then he does um, uh, one light above. So uh, nice. good stuff, you guys. Um, real quick before we there. So there's people uh, chiming in. You got Jordan Fletcher says the bomb.com photographer team. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Ellie says, good morning, everybody. Um, I see Hanan. I'm not sure. He says, hi, Gabriel and Nancy says you guys rock. Uh, Wayne asks, what is his Instagram? Wayne, I'll pull it up real quickly here before we go on to the next photograph. It's uh, J dot LaPlante dot photo. Um, now do you guys, I'm, I'm trying to think, is that, uh, do you guys have one that is, uh, like Maura, do you have a separate one or do you guys both just po post to this one here? Um, so I actually, <laughs> I do documentary family photography for past clients. And so uh -huh. I do have a separate family um, Instagram account that I update occasionally. Okay. <laughs> I should update it a lot more, you know, yeah. it's one of those. Both of our photos go yeah. onto this main account and then the she just account. has a separate uh, documentary family. Mm -hmm. It's like, but it's mostly natural light, uh, photojournalistic moment driven kind of stuff as opposed to like creative lighting and portraits and things like that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome, guys. Well, let's go on to this. Uh, oh, this shows kind of a, a behind the scenes as well for that last shot. So this is uh, the number two shot. And then we had this shot here. I, I, Anika did have a good question about this. He was asking on something like this. Um, in fact, I'll just pull it up here. He says, uh, would usually one flash be a bit stronger than the other? Or what's the best way to set it up? In other words, do you guys have is do you have like an A and B and one is is stronger? Or do you guys keep them about the equal? I always, well, I always keep all of my lights on separate groups, A through D, just so that if I want to uh, play with the levels a little bit, I can, so that they're not all changing, uh, you know, proportionately. Uh, yeah. But for this shot in particular, I think they were set exactly the same, just because that's the look that we were going for. But uh, yeah, if, you, if we wanted to do, you know, make it look like one, more of a one main light and then one fill light or kicker yeah. light, uh, we could have easily done that. But I think here in this shot, they were set at the same power le level. Yeah. And a, a lot of this too is experimentation, you know, and, and sometimes, um, you know, we, we have this actually with the band shoot that we're going to take a look at is one of the first shots that we took ended up being really super cool and we were just testing mm -hmm. lighting. So sometimes, you know, when we're testing lighting and the, and the lights are at different um, powers, you know, sometimes we end up liking that more, but it, it really yeah. is just trial and error. There's no, you know, like technical answer. I love that. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to show everyone. It, it, stay tuned, guys, because it, it, it just keeps getting better and better. They got the senior session, they got photos of them, and then they got this band shoot that you guys got to see at the end that was just done a few days ago. So uh, it's probably new to many people. Um, so let's talk about this shot here. Yeah, so this was another one where we did the three and nine, um, where I'm actually, I believe, holding the light at three o'clock, and then we had one set up at, on a light stand at nine o'clock. Um, but we really just wanted to capture that spot right there so that we can bring the rest. And this was after the sun had you know, been going down a little bit more. Those sunset colors were just getting even richer. And so we wanted to drop a lot of that, um, you know, the background clutter down and just pinpoint Spencer sitting there on the bench with that, that really dramatic sunset in the background. Yeah, so it's the exact same lighting setup as the last shot. Mag boxes with the focus diffusers at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Uh, in the raw image, which I, I could have sent over, but I didn't. <laughs> but you can see the mag boxes in the in the frame in the raw image, and I just uh, 
Photoshop those out at the end. But they were like right at the edge where you see the light end and go mm -hmm. completely to black about 10 feet to his right and 10 feet to his left. That's where the two boxes were. You know, when I look at these pictures, I, I just think back to my high school days and man, I wish I had a nice senior photograph. <laughs> like it makes me so jealous to see these. I actually, when I had my, my football photo taken, you know, like with pads and everyone's looking tough and every time they did high school football photos, everybody would try to look like give a mean face. I had this mean face. I was like, mm, like kind of looking tough. And then my friends made me laugh right when the photographer took the one picture, right? The one picture on film, they made me laugh. And so I had this like like weird face and it looks absolutely terrible. Um, oh, you're going to post that in the yeah, let, Let's pull that up on the screen here so we can see it. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing with me, man. I played football and, and baseball in high school and every photo, I mean, all of the, like the school, the formal shots, uh, the, they're terrible. They're, they're so dated at this point. Although who knows, maybe this will be dated 20 years from now. We'll maybe. I don't know. This looks pretty rad, man. I, I, I would be so happy to have this the rest of my life. That's for sure. What about this shot? This looks incredible as well. Yeah. So this is another one too, um, where we were trying to capture that action. Um, and so the placement where like Jesse was right in front of him and we really wanted to, you know, he was shooting wide and we really wanted to get like that. Because you were a pitcher, right? In high yeah, school. I was a pitcher and he he was a pitcher too, I think. Yeah. So we had him uh, and I just basically laid on the ground right in front of him. Yeah, we wanted to get those dramatic arm movements. So the light here, um, as you can see, like the main light's coming in from nine o'clock, but we also mm -hmm. have one at 12 o'clock because we wanted to capture that nice rim lighting to kind of, you know, set him back from the background a little bit. Yeah, that's what's creating that little uh, kind of rim light on his forearm there and, mm -hmm. and uh, around his head a little bit and kind of uh, backlighting that dust that's being kicked up by his gotcha. back foot there. Yeah. But but on this one, your your flashes were outside the frame enough where you didn't actually have to Photoshop anything. Is that right? Yeah, I might. So uh, the the backlight, the stand was mostly hidden behind his leg, the leg that he's planting on there. His okay. Leg. Uh, but I, th I think I may have had to uh, edit out just like one of the, the uh, feet of the, gotcha. the stand. Uh, but gotcha. the main light that's coming in from nine o'clock uh, was it's still the softbox with the diffuser. Um, that that was out of frame. Yeah. Perfect. Just out of frame, probably like just barely out of frame. I now. think it's also really important to note too that you know we take a ton of photos, um, you know, so there were plenty of frames where his pose wasn't perfect, but maybe the light was hidden completely, and then there were others where the pose was even better, but the light wasn't totally hidden, and we're really just trying to give ourselves the best chance to have that, you know, that really perfect yeah. photo where everything kind of aligns. No, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, you got a question from Cole Harper. Uh, we all love Cole. She says, uh, what's your favorite lens to shoot with? Um, my go-to is just the um, 24 to 70. That's what I do the majority of, uh, of shoots with. That's what I shoot with probably 75% of the wedding day with. Um, but my favorite lens uh, is more of a niche lens is the 14 to 24, which uh, I love getting like really close and going super wide to like, I, I kind of like that parallax air look, you know, where everything's sort of uh, distorted at the edges and kind of limbs are like coming toward the camera like this and things, right? Yeah. Um, now, that said, I can't remember off the top of my head which lens this was. To me, it looks more like 24 millimeters than, than it does 14. Uh, yeah. But yeah, favorite lens would be that 14 millimeter. Uh, and then my, the one I use the most frequently is the 24 to 70. Yeah, Love. and since we live in such a beautiful place with um, really incredible landscapes, that also helps us in our wedding uh, business in really letting Colorado shine through and capturing the, the epicness of yeah. where we good. live. Uh, 14 millimeters is like perfect for astrophotography too, which we love to do out here in Colorado because we don't have a ton of light pollution. Um, just showing the whole scope of the night sky, you know, with the Milky Way and all that stuff. Uh, the, the wider, the better for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. Cole, Cole adds that she says, uh, my next investment will be the 14. She, she, uh, she really <laughs> likes that. She, oh, and she said, you two are awesome. So... Um, You're awesome too, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, before we go on to those next uh, images, really quickly, uh, Shannon Kane is asking what learning opportunities you all have coming up. Because I know you guys do some incredible <laughs> workshops. Oh, Shannon. Shannon's trying to get a plug in here. We weren't going to plug anything. Well, we have, we do have some things coming up. We haven't made any announcements yet, but uh, we're planning on announcing two separate um, educational opportunities, probably the first week of March. One will be online and the other will be in person probably later on this year, maybe with another 
uh, MagMod ambassador. We'll see. Right on. That's awesome. You guys always have the coolest names for your workshops. Like I'm always impressed at what, what was the last one called? Interlude. Interlude sessions. Cause it's an, it's an interlude between we spend so much Trevor, time. Like, so much time. I'm like, we should just go with something simple, right? Just the whatever <laughs> lighting workshop and more is like, no, nope. it needs to be sophisticated. Because what the difference, the difference between, no, the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the same as the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. Mark Twain, right? Mark Twain. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. I like that. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and, and you guys, if you want to find out more about their workshops on their website, they have a little section up at the top that says workshops here. And I imagine you guys will probably toss it up there. Is that right? Yep. So uh, you can go on there at any point in time and uh, pre-register for our future workshops. And then you receive an email from us uh, letting you know a few days before every new announcement goes on sale. Mm -hmm. So you'd be the first one to know when we announce new, new dates, new workshops. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Esteban, he says, uh, how much for Jesse Moira's autographs? I have cash in hand. <laughs> you can't afford it. <laughs> can't afford it. So, um, I want a 10 minute back massage from you and then we will both sign anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then Avi mentions, uh, he says, it looks like Jonathan Thorpe style, classy commercial all in one. I like, I actually oh, don't I, know Jonathan Thorpe, but neither, neither do I. I'm going to check that out now. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look into him as well. Well, right on. So that same um, shoot, you actually, uh, it looks like afterwards you took him and is this his girlfriend? Yeah, so we, again, these are, uh, his dad's a friend of mine. So we uh, spent a couple of days kind of touring them around Colorado, going on some hikes, showing him the mountains. And uh, Spencer had brought his girlfriend along on the trip also. Uh, so we did just a couple of real quick um, couples portraits for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, I think, was it? What did you, which gel did you put in? Uh, I did the, it was the full CTB. Um, the, nice. Like the sunset was shaping up to be pretty cool, but we wanted to just play with the color a little bit and shift it more toward the warmer side. Um, so we popped that into the uh, the mag box and just were able to shift it a little bit. Yeah, Excellent. this one was shot up on top of uh, Loveland Pass at 12,000 feet above sea level. Um, mm -hmm. And like Morris said, it's just the sunset wasn't quite uh, as as spectacular as we wanted it to be. So by popping that uh, blue gel into the box, we were able to shift our white balance down to around, or, or no, we should, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting back, I'm all tripped up now. Other way around, yeah. The pandemic yeah. is doing a number on me. We shifted <laughs> it up to probably around nine or 10,000 Kelvin, uh, which shifted the ambient light to orange and the blue gel in the box kept the skin tones in the realistic color space. Yeah. I love that. In fact, Laura asked, do you change white balance? Which the answer to that would be absolutely because you guys don't keep it on auto white balance. You're constantly just changing depending on the environment, right? Isn't that yeah, the case? We're always shooting just in, in Kelvin mode where I can set the exact uh, Kelvin setting right there manually. Yeah. Uh, it just, that's the way that it makes most sense to me. And, and that's the way that gives you the most control as opposed, as opposed to shooting auto uh, or Obviously, you can also do um, one of the presets, like for sun or flash, and tweak it from there. But I like to just do the Kelvin spectrum. We're a yeah. little bit controlling, and that, that's one of the ways that we just we don't want the camera making the decision for us. So we do manual everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad. I, I, I love, again, I'm, I'm, I, I always enjoy these little meetings because there's so many little things that everyone does things a little bit different. But it's also fun when you hear photographers repeat, like, hey, this is the way we do things. And it kind of just helps you to go, hey, that's. Must be a must be a solid way of doing it if everyone's doing it that way. So, um, yeah. I love it, uh, guys. Let's jump onto this. Uh, I, I call it the snow <laughs> session, but I think this is like I said, this is like your Christmas cards, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. So uh, we do a holiday card every year, and typically we try to do some sort of portrait that we did in the past year for one of our couples. We were like, hey, this was really fun, and it had a really cool result. We kind of want a photo of ourselves using this you know, uh, whatever we did, whether it's uh, we've done holy powder, we've done champagne spraying. Um, and this year was a little different because we didn't quite have as many opportunities to pull from as far as, uh, you know, what sort of portraits we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually got what, like six inches of snow in Colorado in early November which is rare for us. Uh, we actually, we don't typically get that much snow until later in the year. In the city, in the mountains, yeah. we get snow really early, but down in, in the front range in the Denver, Boulder area, we don't get a yeah. lot of snow. And, you know, so we're like, okay, 2020, yeah. let's just have a snowball fight because that's kind of what it felt like. 
Um, so we just uh, posted up in our backyard. We set up our lights and uh, you know the camera on an interval, and we um, made snowballs and yeah. threw them at each other. So what she means by interval, we put the camera on a tripod and we mm -hmm. did the interval timer mode. That you, uh, most people use that to like create a time lapse mm -hmm. of uh, you know, clouds moving or uh, you know stars streaking across the sky, that sort of thing. Um, but we did it. We set the camera to I think uh, ten frames or five frames per second for 10 seconds something like that we always yeah. mess it up the first time we try it and then like it, yeah. it takes several several tries and then it's right. on a timer so when i release the shutter it goes beep 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 right for 10 seconds and then we can get into place start the action and then it takes 50 shots over the course yeah. of the next uh 10 seconds or however long you set it for yeah. uh and then you know you come back and reset it and do it again so that way yeah. uh, you know we don't have to have someone come over and, and take the photos for and us it's actually it's pretty challenging because um, so when we do this, you know, cameras on the tripod, Jesse has to get um, the uh, focus. And so I, I try to stay in one spot the entire time and, and we try mm. to have like our marks that we really have to hit so that we have that nice, crisp, clear focus. Um, so while Jesse was working on the interval and getting the focus down, um, I was prepping snowballs. And uh, so <laughs> you can see like our, our little chairs there. And so I would put the snowballs there and we both grab them and we, you know, Jesse would set the interval and then run to his marker and then we'd count it down and then we just, you know, like throw snow at each other. Um, and I think there's a series in here. Yep. So while I was doing this after um, the first couple of times we went through, uh, <laughs> I decided to make two snowballs for myself and only give Jesse one. And, and not tell me about it. didn't know about so it. So the plan was throw one snowball at each other, then go in and like for a conciliatory hug. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know that she hit another snowball behind her back. And, this and I was, got him right in the chin. Nailed me right in the chin with it. <laughs> and I at least expected. So that became our Christmas card. And the theme was, um, you know. 2020 it was a real snowball to the face. There you go. What Was this yeah. the conciliatory yeah. hug right here? Is this is this no. you guys? That was his response <laughs> after he realized what I had done. That is retribution is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So the lighting then, you guys, and in fact, I've seen you guys do this quite a few times, like you said, with the holly color or with the champagne. You guys kind of like that, uh, maybe like a 10 and 2 kind of lighting, yeah. right? Where it's kind of behind them just a little bit. And it, and it creates that, uh, what we like to call the short light, where basically you're, you're shooting on the shadow side of the face, but they're lighting them up. Um, I, I, I just, I love that, guys. And again, here's that BTS where everyone can see it. You can see those lights are just behind them kind of shooting over their shoulders. Do you find that when you're doing it at this this kind of lighting setup, do you have to have your light stands a certain height uh, in order to get the best lighting out of it? I, I, well, generally just above eye level is what we go for, but I think those are 10 foot stands. So they're probably extended up to maybe eight or nine feet, uh, something like that. Yeah, 10, I think it might've been kind of windy. So if they're at 10 feet, we risk them mm -hmm. falling over. Um, but yeah, just above eye level, and the thing that I like about the 10 and 2 is that, yeah, you do get that short light on both of our faces, but you also get that rim light and yeah. kind of hair light coming mm -hmm. in from behind. So it, it's, it gives kind of the illusion of maybe a four light setup, uh, but with only two lights, since the, the light on the right hand side is creating that kicker light on Morris back mm -hmm. and the key yeah. light on me and the light on the left is doing, the, uh, you know, vice versa. And yeah, I think and we, you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're totally fine. I was just going to say, I think you just answered Steven's question, which is, is there any light, any front light? And the answer to that would be no, you guys just use those two lights, the 10 and 2, right? Yeah. And there's, you know, there's a little bit of light wrap coming around uh, to the front. So it doesn't, you know, the, the, we don't go to pitch black on the front. There's, there is detail in those shadow areas, uh, but we do like to keep the lighting a little bit more um, dramatic and contrasty and what we would call tenebristic a little mm -hmm. bit, right? By uh, by really playing up those contrasts and not filling in too much. I love that. And I'm sorry, Moira, what were you, what were you gonna add? Well, I was just gonna say, this is a, another one of our go-to lighting setups. Um, and especially if we're putting stuff into the air. Uh, and that's something we like to do a lot of, whether it's snow like this or the holy powder or champagne spray. Um, you know, as, if we can backlight whatever's in the air, then we, we just get, even more of, of whatever's up there. Yeah, so those lights then are all, even though it's not a true backlight, it is, the lights are behind us a little bit at 10 and two, which also illuminates that snow as it hits us and, and sprays up into the air. I love that. Moira, you have that, that light coming through the window shutters, it looks like. <laughs> It makes it makes it look like you have a really cool braid in your hair. Yeah, I like that. 
end it that way, Trevor. <laughs> I like it. Hey, uh, Wayne asked the question. He says, do you ever use continuous lights? Uh, no, we haven't. But, um, you know, that's definitely a, a cool, creative thing that we might incorporate in the future for shoots. But, uh, yeah, we, we haven't done that yet. I think at, at weddings, if the videographer is using a continuous light for something like yeah, toasts, right. um, we'll often just lean on them. Uh, and that's typically when we're capturing more moments rather than, you know, creative portraits. If we don't want to be too intrusive, if there's two videographers and two of us and, you know, they have a video light, we don't necessarily want to go in and put our light there too and be too distracting. So sometimes we'll just, you know, if there's if there's good ambient light there uh, or someone else's light, might as well play yeah. out of that. That makes a lot of sense. And then um, Laura was ask, also asking, uh, what was your Kelvin for this? This would just been 50, straight up 5,500. So I always, on every single shoot, start out uh, at 5,500 because that's the, basically the dead center of that Kelvin spectrum. And it also aligns pretty well with flash and also with um, daylight, direct sunlight. Uh, and then from there, um, if we use gels and things like that, or if it's blue hour or sunset, then we might move it around from there. But uh, when we're just using flashes with no gels, uh, pretty much always at 5,500. Love it. Before we jump into this last sesh, uh, this last set here of photos, the band photos, um, Deborah did ask, she's asking about adjusting skin tones. Um, it, it, do you, I mean, normally you try to nail skin tones in camera, right? As far as your white balance goes and stuff. Yeah, we do our best. I, <laughs> but I'm colorblind. Yeah. Uh, so Mora does all the uh, color correction and post because yep. I struggle with green magenta and uh, in skin tones especially. Yeah. So uh, typically, like you said, Trevor, we try to nail it in camera, which is why we'll do that color shifting and use the gels, um, you know, with our flash to help keep that skin tone uh, accurate in, you know, even when we're shifting the background color. Um, but as far as just like uh, doing post production. Um, I mean, I play around like I know our, our cameras tend to shoot a little bit greener. So we always I always have to put a little bit more magenta in. And then really, it's just like playing around with the orange and the red sliders. If there is something, uh, you know, like if they're getting hit with um, like a blue light or something like that, then we'll have to go and do a little bit more brush work. Yeah. Um, but it really is just, you know, playing by eye and using the brush to our advantage. I remember back in the day when. I would just unilaterally edit and post things places and he would be like uh skin looks kind of green there jesse what's going on and i'd be like ah i'm colorblind darn it i forgot to get more his opinion on this so now we have that worked into our workflow that <laughs> my photos i will start to edit and then more comes in does all the color correction before we do that that final uh that final cut so that's awesome i love that you guys you know it's funny one of the little well-known or I should say not well-known facts about me is I can't see out of my left eye. And oh, so, no yeah. So a lot of people are like, you know, Oh, you got great eyes. And I'm like, well, not really. I, I don't have great eyes. And then, and then the funny thing, one time I did a video and I was, I was photographing and I had that camera up to my right eye. And one of the comments was in the video, it said, uh, this guy's obviously not a professional cause he doesn't even shoot with his left eye. And I'm thinking, <sighs> If this guy only knew that I can't even see out of my left eye. Oh, man. He, <laughs> he, he, so, yeah, I know. Well, the funny, I mean, the crazy thing about that, like Maura just said, the, uh, do you know the famous uh, glass blower, Dale Chihuly? Are uh, you familiar? No. So he's from Seattle, I believe. But uh, place if, in if you've been into the Bellagio yeah. in Vegas, yeah, uh, yeah. the whole city is covered in blown yeah. glass art. Yeah. That's his institution. Pretty much if you've ever seen any blown glass, it was probably Chihuly. But he... Uh, Way back in the day, um, I'm going to go off on a tangent real quick here, but way back in the day, the measure of a, a glass blower was how perfectly symmetrical they could make glass art. That was like, that was perfect glass art. It was perfectly symmetrical. And then Dale Chihuly got into a car accident and, and lost the uh, eyesight in his left eye. Uh -huh. And after that happened, his work started to become more abstract and sort of led to this whole tide shift into what you see with glass art installations these days in the Bellagio at the Denver Botanic Gardens and hundreds yeah. of other places. So the point is maybe the fact that you can't see out of your left eye actually helps you see the world from a different point of view and potentially increases your creativity. It, no, you're, I, I actually, I tell people it's like I'm looking through a camera all the time, right? Because usually yeah. when we look through a camera with one eye and we don't have this much depth and, and things. But uh, yeah, I, I, I find that anytime we have those disabilities, 
whether it be colorblindness or one eye, whatever it is, there's always ways to make that a positive in life if we don't just, right. you know, think about the negatives. I mean, in your situation, you get to have this beautiful companion that helps you to edit your photos and make sure that the skins are not green. So, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, but I also trick him uh, with jelly beans when he can't tell the color. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. yeah, that was definitely a red jelly bean. Even. Yeah. And I'll be like, <laughs> oh, pepper beans. Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Well, guys, so this next shoot that we want to talk about is one that you guys just did recently. Is that right? Yeah, just uh, Thursday. Four days, four or five days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday. That's excellent. So you, tell us about these then. Yeah. So uh, the dude in the middle is a local wedding DJ who um, we love working with. He is just like at the top of his game as far as wedding DJs go. I just uh -huh. really into what he's doing. Very passionate about it. Recommend him to all other couples. Yeah. And just a, a great guy to work with. And so um, when he reached out and said like, hey, my band's been working on some new music uh, during the, the pandemic. <laughs> we would really love to you know get some photos done what's the process you know and, and then we met with them we talked through their ideas we talked about some of our ideas we storyboarded and then uh we all met in a, a live venue or a live music venue in denver um that was freezing cold on like a what the high that day was like 10. it was super cold and empty because <clears throat> there's no concerts yes. going on right now obviously yeah. Um, and then we just got to play around again with creative lighting, uh, using more lights than we get to use during weddings um, and just do some really fun things, uh, especially with the gels. And so they had a really, you know, they had some colorful ideas and, and they threw out some colors on our first meeting. And so we got to, you know, come with the gels and, and hold them up and be like, okay, which ones do you like? Like we're, These are the colors we're going to use and then they can pick. And it was very much you know a, a collaborative yeah uh, process so we laid out all we have all the the creative gels and the artistic gels so we have like 20 different uh colors that they could pick from and these are the colors they picked and we kind of mm -hmm. stuck with that motif throughout the majority of the shoot yeah well i love in, in every single one of these photos uh you have these colors which i'll share here in just a second i did want to just mention so on this one did you actually, uh, you shot each one individually and then you put them together in Photoshop, right? Kind of the three slivers, is that right? Yep, this is three shots. Uh, it's just okay. a brick wall behind them, but the, we, we uh, you know, I had them pretty close to the camera and the brick wall was so far away yeah. that we completely dropped it out of focus so that it looks like a smooth wall. Uh, and then we put the, was it a sphere too or just the gel? Uh, it was just the gel. No, it was the no. I sphere. think it was the sphere it because sphere. it right. might have and it might have been even uh, the gel, a grid, and a sphere because it has a pretty nice round pattern yeah. uh, back there. But we just basically uh, swapped in the different colors, swapped in the different guys, and uh, more lit them from above with a grid uh, or a snoop. No, it's it's the grid. Grid. So, yeah. Yeah. This is. <laughs> It was a real workout. So whenever we do the, so the she, lighting yeah, from she held it up above, like a boom. You know, you hold the, the light yep. like a boom straight straight operator yeah. on a on a film set. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I and I think it, it, just to again kind of reemphasize what they said, you guys, is they, they pull them far enough away from the wall so that when you guys are putting color on the wall, you're not getting that light pollution from the light that's lighting up the subject, right? I mean you're using a grid kind of up close. And it's lighting up the the guys, but you're not getting that pollution that basically desaturates the color behind them. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, neither of the two lights are are polluting the other for sure. Yeah, love that. Um, real quick, I, I Amanda had commented a few times, and I I, I looked over, I didn't see it here. Uh, she had mentioned that she going back to the snow one that she wants to do something like that with her husband. Um, but she'll have to get her daughter involved probably <laughs> is what she says. But, but I just have to mention this before we go to the next photo. She says, uh, I want to do this for me and, and notice her, all her caps. Um, <laughs> well, the, she says this, she says, sorry for caps editing website at the same time as listening. I, I actually was thinking about, do you guys ever do this when you're in Lightroom and you have caps on? So the auto advances to the next photo, like when you rate or, or anything, and then you go write like a message on Facebook or something and it's all caps. You get, you know what I'm talking about? And then it uh -huh. sounds like you're yelling at everyone. Yeah, I do that all the time. I'm like editing because, yeah, I have to have all caps on when I'm in Lightroom. But um, anyhow, so Amanda, sorry that I missed your comment earlier. Um, and by the way, uh, Jesse, Ellie had pointed out as well, Joel Grimes, the one that I mentioned, the Sports Illustrated or the ESPN lighting, he actually yeah. is colorblind as well. Um, oh, yeah. So. yeah it's, uh, well, I think it's like one out of yeah. every 12 or 13 men in the U.S. Are oh, really? Colorblind. So yeah, it's a lot more rare uh, in women. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, I run into other uh, male photographers all the time who are also colorblind. It's, it's surprising how many of us there are. That's cool though. Yeah. Well, right on. So let's go. We got about uh, four more shots from this band shoot and every single one is so unique and different. So um, I'll let you guys explain how this one is shot. You or me? You. Me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I tried not to look at, um, I try to go into every shoot without any preconceived notions for how someone else would do it or uh, what other people have done in the past with similar types of shoots. Um, so I, I didn't look at any uh, album artwork uh, before shooting, but I, now that I'm looking at this one, to me it looks, I can see the inspiration from that Queen album. Uh, where they're each lit up individual. I think it's like it was for the Bohemian Rhapsody single. That they yeah, played. yeah, yeah. Pretty good shot. Um, so, but yeah, the idea here, I want it to look like an obvious composite, uh, but again, still using that same color motif for the guys, the green on the left, yeah, <laughs> blue, yes. blue and then the purple. And, and the crazy thing to me is like blue and purple are pretty much the same thing to my eye. Yeah. So when they chose blue and purple, I was like, oh, because well, then well, I don't yeah. really get to see the color contrast there. I know that everybody else can. So we, we had this argument too in post production when it came to do um, to work on the colors. He had pushed the purple up until it was more magenta and more mm. pink, and I kept bringing it down. And he's like, "I can't tell the difference. Is that purple?" And I kept like, wanting it. You warmer, have to trust warmer. me on this. <laughs> so, anyways, I, we we compromised, and I pushed it uh, a little bit warmer, but mm -hmm. not as as warm as I wanted it. So if it was if it was me, I probably would have done a red on the guy on the right, just because then it would be the the primary colors and they're very they stick out very vividly to me. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, same thing here, but just without that background light. So now we've got a grid still on the flash, but we've put the gel directly on the flash to just light them with that color. Uh, so we again we still have that light coming in from directly above up on a boom like this, uh, just kind of lighting from top down to give that kind of like creepy ethereal uh lp cover look to it mm -hmm. you know you know what i love about this too is that it doesn't matter what color you choose whether it's green blue purple and you kind of touched on this is that because they're such unique and different colors uh you can actually go in there in photoshop or lightroom and using the sliders the hue sliders you could make those really whatever colors you wanted uh right. you know you could either fine tune it or you could even change it entirely which is kind of fun. That's that's when I was looking at your band photos here. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, man, if they decided they didn't want those colors and they wanted to use a certain, you know, set of colors, you could easily change those, which is so cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, in fact, uh, so let's like this one right here. I mean, here's a perfect example. If, if you wanted to change something behind them, you certainly could. But uh, but this one, you guys actually kind of it looks like you lit them. Gosh, I can't tell. Did you like them each individually on this one? Was this no. a composite? This is no, this is single frame, and this is five lights, which we never have the time to do on a wedding day. <laughs> yeah, we rarely have the time to do two lights on a wedding day. Uh, but yeah, this was five lights, and which is how many lights we have. Yeah. So if one of them failed, this we would have to change something around. So it's two soft boxes at nine o'clock and three o'clock. Uh, again, it's that same sort of uh, ESPN Sports Illustrated lighting yeah. we were talking about earlier, um, and then three lights behind on the ground pointed up with each guy's individual color kind of directed at him. So the one behind Mike, the guy in the middle, was pointed straight up the middle of the wall behind him. And then the purple and green for the other two guys were kind of pointed out and up towards the corners of the frame like that. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. I love that. Um, Katie was asking, do you guys still, like on the last image, even when you use the colors, are you still using the 5500 Kelvin typically? Yeah, the, typically the only time that we're going to change the Kelvin from 5500 is if we're shifting the white balance with a, a, a CTB or a CTO gel to change the ambient color temperature uh, to either blue or orange, right? And then maintain the, the neutral skin tones on whatever we're lighting. Uh, but we're, when we're using the theatrical gels, they already have that richness of color embedded right within them, right? Uh, theatrical gel, sorry, it's a uh, you know creative okay. gels and the artistic gels. Therefore, we don't need to do anything with the white balance to create those colors. It's already there, mm -hmm. uh, and we want to retain just the normal skin tones, right? So that's why uh, there's no gels now um, on our key lights that are lighting our subjects, as opposed to that last one where we actually lit their skin up mm -hmm. uh, with the creative gels. Yeah, I love that. 
Ellie says, reminds me of Depeche Mode. I could totally see that. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not familiar with that. I, I know the band, but I, I need to look at some photos of them. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny. Well, and, and I think even the band themselves kind of kind of remind I'm going to have to go listen to some Depeche Mode today, man. It's been too long. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Amanda had mentioned that uh, just seeing you guys do all this wants her to stop the website and go play with Magmod, which I totally agree, Amanda. Um, yeah. You know, out of curiosity for this shot here, did you guys do this, uh, you know, at the, was it nighttime? I mean, or was this shot indoors or outdoors or? We were indoors. Um, okay. We started during the day and then, and I think this was during the day, but this was kind of like tucked back in the corner. So there was a, a garage door that was open, letting some light in. Gotcha. Um, but we were in an area that was pretty shaded, so we could drop that, you know, the the ambient light down. Yeah, so quite a bit. None of these photos from this set have any ambient light whatsoever affecting the frame. Yeah. So if flashes, if the trigger stops working, batteries die, something like that, all the frames are just completely black. Uh, so that means the location doesn't really matter that mm -hmm. much. Uh, we could have done it outside at night, could have done it in a studio, or in this case, uh, and you know, a, a venue, a music venue that's doesn't have anything else going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. What about this one? Now, this is interesting because we don't see a whole lot of images posted in the Magmon community or on Instagram and stuff that are black and white. Cause it sends, it seems like a lot of people when they shoot with Magmon, they're tending, you know, to use color and stuff, but I love how you here you guys made such an impactful and really cool image, um, in black and white. So tell us about this one. So we actually did use the gels on this and uh, those two lights in the back have orange gels. Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> these dots are, here, <laughs> if you don't mind. No, I, I actually, I, I kind of dig it. it. It's kind of funny because in fact, a few people have commented on the light braid that you have going down. I, I think yeah. it's great. Yeah. Now, well, now we have a directional incandescent bulb, 3300 Kelvin <laughs> off to camera right or camera left. <laughs> that works. I like it. More that it just kept hitting me in the eyeball. Um, yeah, but we used the the orange gels on this because we wanted to mimic stage lighting without actually having the the venue have to turn on their lighting and, and you know play around with it. Um, but in the end, we really just liked the feel. I mean, they, they just look so badass and bringing down uh, you know any of the the color is, or taking out all the color really focuses on their expression and their posture, and it, it really I think. It brings that emotion across a lot faster. My favorite part of this whole thing is everybody throwing up the different bands that this reminds them of, which I love because yeah. I'm a big music aficionado. And I, I definitely, Amanda, now now that you said that, I do see the Beastie Boys a little bit yeah. in this. But I, I, it wasn't I, in the middle of the time, I don't think. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. I love it. We got Queen, we got Depeche Mode, we got Beastie Boys. I love it. I, I was thinking the exact same thing, Jesse. I'm, I'm like really digging everyone mentioning these, I, you know, who, who it reminds them of. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So. Like Morris said, we had the orange gels on there at first, and uh, we'll probably deliver a color edit to them too. But I just, I had this feeling, and this is usually when I go to black and white, is I just have some feeling that's like, this might look really cool as a black and white. So I, I used my black and white high contrast preset on it and uh, ended up liking this final one uh, in black. What? And white. When, when, you say, when you say you're black and white high contrast, is that just a preset that you created in Lightroom? Yeah, exactly. Do you sell those presets anywhere? I, I don't. I, pre I appreciate the uh, setting me up for a plug, but I, I don't. Maybe maybe sometime in the future. We'll, we'll yeah. See. Awesome. Uh, Julia LaPlante. She must be related. Oh, hey, Julia. How are you doing? Oh, Julia. I'm sorry. I said Julia. Yeah, no That's worries. awesome. Yes. Um, oh, fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. So this is the last shot, and I'm kind of sad that it's the last shot because uh, because I, I love, I, again, you guys have so many great shots. So we'll have to definitely schedule another one of these uh, later this year with you guys. Um, I just love bringing you on and having you talk about them. But tell us about this, this photograph here. Yeah, so... You know, the caveat here is we, we definitely aren't the first ones to do this and we, we didn't come up with the idea. But so we had done so many serious shots already and we're like, OK, we want to do something fun and goofy. The guy in the middle, Ryan, had brought this awesome, uh, you know, shirt that was a, uni a, a, it was a cat riding a unicorn yeah. with a rainbow behind <laughs> it. And I mean, it was so we wanted to do something a little more fun because these guys are a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and so we did the yeah, uh, everything else was like them looking like badasses, yeah. which is great. But then just to add a little levity, we decided to completely flip the script at yeah. the end. And so for this, we used three lights and we did um, the red, the red gel, the green gel and the blue gel, because the red, the green and the blue lights combine 
to make white. And so when it hits their, uh, you know, the combined light hits their faces, their skin tones are going to be, um, you know, they're going to look accurate, but then it casts these really cool, colorful shadows on the wall. And the funny thing is we actually showed up and Mike, the guy on the left goes, Hey, have you ever seen like those photos where they have the different colored shadows on the wall? We're like, Mike, you're reading our minds. <laughs> yeah. He described this like exactly. And we knew we were going to do it at the end yeah. again, just to try something that we haven't done before. Um, and, you know, add a little bit of levity, but the, the fact that he came into it with the exact same idea. And I don't think we have a BTS for this one behind the scenes for yeah. this one, but um, essentially what you do is you put three lights in one spot, but right next to each other. And mm -hmm. when they hit, subject they all combine to make a neutral colored light on the skin but since they're staggered just slightly uh they project the different colored shadows onto the wall behind the subject yeah i love that you guys it looks so cool and i love their their jumping their poses i mean they actually got pretty high there were they jumping off yeah. something or did they just jump straight up in the air they're just jumping up in the air yeah but ryan the guy in the middle he's i guess some a bit of an athlete because he was able to uh to really get up there yeah, he was. And I, I love the uh, Orlando. I'd mentioned Red Hot Chili Peppers. I totally see Red Hot Chili Peppers, too, mainly because of the, the hat. It seems like they're always wearing something. And then and then uh, uh, I, I also see like a little bit of the expression of I think what was the Red Hot Chili Peppers guy's name? I think it was Fly, the, the guitar player. Flea. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. yeah, the bass. That's right. That's awesome. So cool. So cool. So uh, again, how many lights did you use on this one then? It was it was three. Is that right? Yeah, so it was the red, the green, and the blue just staggered slightly. They were what, like seven. No other modifiers, blocks. no yeah. no grids, no spheres, nothing like that. And I just, think we uh, ended up we had them up a little bit higher, but we ended up bringing them down a little bit because we wanted it to cast the shadow. Up right. On so the it, wall. as you raise the lights up, the shadows cast lower, and vice versa. And as you get it closer to a camera, then it projects directly behind them. Mm -hmm. So it's just maybe like three or four feet off to camera left. Uh, coming back into the frame to light them to sort of uh, put those shadows on the wall just to the to the camera right of where they are. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Jan says you both rock, not just the musicians. Shannon also, she mentioned she saw your stories on this one and couldn't wait to see the final shots. I'm assuming she's referring to the Instagram stories. Is that right? You guys post a lot of BTS on your Instagram stories? Yeah, did, more, did you? Yes. I, I well, did. they also, the band, one of their girlfriends came along and did some uh, behind the scenes videos too, but we still haven't gotten our hands on those. Maybe some of those show more of lighting setups and we can include those in the, in the yeah. uh, Magma community at some point. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of fun to do this with, um, with people because when you're taking the photos, they really have no idea what to expect because yeah. the experience in real life is so different from what the camera sees. And so, you know, it's just us, I think that we probably spent about 10 minutes just getting them to jump. <clears throat> Um, at the same time so that everybody was lifted off the ground instead of, you know, like kind of at different times. Um, but like once we had that down, I think it was, we got this pretty quickly. Yeah, no, it totally makes a lot of sense. I, um, Laura also just says, uh, can you share your basic camera settings you start with for a shot like this? Is there, I mean, you had mentioned the white balance earlier. Do you guys typically start with a particular aperture or anything like that or ISO? Uh, yeah, well, when there's a lot of movement, um, I usually use like just a slightly smaller app. I don't go all the way wide open to 2.8. I maybe go 4, uh, 4 or F4 or F5, just yes. give myself a little bit more leeway if people are moving around, uh, a little bit more leeway in depth of field. Um, uh, shutter, I typically keep it at my camera's uh, organic sync speed, which is 1 250th. Uh, the lights we use do uh, support high speed sync function, but I've found that um, if you're using a whole bunch of different lights and you're shooting in high speed sync, the Godox AD200s uh, will sometimes, like one of them won't fire and two will fire. So just for consistency purposes, I keep my uh, my shutter at uh, 250 pretty much all the time. You know, and from there, I adjust the ISO to uh, if it's, you know, too dark or too bright. Awesome. Um, oh, th I guess maybe this is more of a question that I could probably answer. She says, because uh, you guys have pointed out you use the Magbox quite a bit in your shots. Yeah. And she's saying, when, when will it be available? Um, Deborah, if you check at b &H, um, I think they might have some. Or just send a message to support at magnetmod.com. And they might be able to tell you which dealers currently have them in stock and could be able to help you out. So email support at magnetmod.com. 
Um, Judy had mentioned, uh, she goes, did I miss the wedding shots? <laughs> if not, are you going to do wedding shots? Uh, if not, please love your work. Uh, you guys are still doing weddings, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and you're still staying busy with that. It's just in, uh, I, I actually really enjoyed this episode of How I Shot It because we did cover shots that are outside of weddings, which you know we all know that we can do, but sometimes we just don't get a chance. But what a great time to be doing other things besides weddings you know, during this pandemic when we don't have as many weddings. So, um, But it sounds like everybody's excited to see your wedding shots here soon. <laughs> well, we have a full slate for 2021, yeah, so there, there will be plenty to come. That's excellent. Um, cool, cool. Excellent. Well, guys, I, I, there's one other, I'm not sure, Laura, I think she bingo is wondering why sometimes they wouldn't flash. I'm not sure I, this, is she referring to mm. like the high speed sync with multiple lights? Maybe. I mean, there's oh. a million, there's yeah. a million different technical reasons why a flash water. might not fire. Uh, yeah. If there's too much cement, if you're shooting across a body of water, if you're shooting past your sink speed, if all the settings aren't perfect on the trigger. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so much troubleshooting that you have to do, but uh, in general, the Godox 8200s are pretty reliable uh, below the, the sync speed. Mm -hmm. You push it past the sync speed, they just seem to like not quite fire off at exactly the same time for some reason. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought up the, the water thing because that is the one that bothers me the most when you're shooting and you're like trying to get your light to go across a pond or something. Or even sometimes, even if there's just water on the street, I find that I always have that, you know, issue where my flash doesn't fire and I'm like, what's going on? And then I realize it's water. Um, yeah. And that's that's something it doesn't happen always. But for whatever weird, strange reason, when there's water around, sometimes our flashes, I don't know, is there is there a technical reason for that? Do you know, Jesse? Or more? It has to do with video waves. Yeah, more is used to be a scientist. So. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I used to work in science. I used to play one on TV. Um, <laughs> no, I used to work as a scientist and I, I'm kind of a science nerd, but I am pretty sure it has to do with the radio waves and how they interact with water that's interesting yeah yeah and it's, it's not to say that it, it doesn't work so right. you know don't avoid all water just because of this uh it's just a, it seems a little bit more hit or miss yeah it does uh, that's why we take a ton of frames and you pick out the ones you know that did work yeah so before you throw your flash away or your trigger away make sure that yeah, exactly. It wasn't well, and, and to be perfectly honest, sometimes all we do is turn the flash off and back on if it's not mm -hmm. playing yeah. right. That's the extent of my technical <laughs> troubleshooting abilities is, I don't know, did you turn it off and back on again? That's awesome. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I super appreciate you guys. I, I hope you guys watching um, enjoyed this new live format that we're doing uh, where we can see your questions and, and be able to answer them right here in, you know, on live. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube later on, please be sure to join us. We... We'll try to come up with a schedule where we can have these how I shot it's more consistent, like on a day and time. But I also love to be able to have this open to uh, our guests as well, because they're, they're obviously working. And, and so I know you two are, in fact, going to be doing some shoots coming up this week. And so I, you know, I'm glad you guys were able to join me today. But uh, but guys, uh, thank you so much, Jesse and Maura. Thank you for joining me and for spending you know 45 minutes here and, and talking about these images. They seriously are just absolutely fantastic. You guys are so talented. So oh, thanks, thanks, man. Thanks for having us on again. Yeah. And uh, once again, I have to compliment you on your beautiful uh, streaming lighting that you have. Yeah. Going there <laughs> I'm trying, man. Like, like, like I told you before, when we first came on, you're like, wow, your lighting looks so good. And I said, you know, I got to up you guys in something. I mean, you guys are killing me on the photography world. So I, I got to make a, make sure I look better somehow or another. Yeah. Well, well we just have this orange lamp over here right now. So, you know, but <laughs> gel back there and that soft and you color coordinated in. with your outfit too it's amazing right look at that look at i even have two shirts that color coordinate <laughs> Are you i actually by now? <laughs> you know what i'm gonna have to uh i'm gonna have to do one of these where it just changes oh. there we go that way that way i can get really distracting behind people wow. and i That's and awesome. i gotta say i can't give away too much but i am i'm actually using a uh, magmod product Ooh, that nobody knows about yet so Oh man. So stay tuned 2021. That was your that was your little teaser right there, guys. <laughs> cool. Well, excellent. Well, before I, I distract too many more people with this crazy color behind me now, we will get out of here. But thank you again, Jesse and Mora. Super appreciate you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, and for all the questions and comments. Uh, we had uh, lots of uh, you know, incredible, you got very inspiring. Thanks, Jesse and Mora. I mean, you guys are just killing it. So um, again, thanks. Thanks for being here. You guys really appreciate you guys. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you uh, next week.
for another How I Shot It. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.